Hi, and welcome back to Lightscribe.tv. In this video, I want to show you how to create any Lightscribe label you like using the simple labeler. As we saw in the video on the template labeler, you can use one of the blank um, templates to import any um, background label you wish to create a label from. Unfortunately, with the simple labeler, you haven't got this facility, not in a direct way anyway. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is not because I think you should use this instead of the template labeler. I don't. I think you should definitely use the template labeler if you can have it installed. However, a lot of people find that they can't install the uh, template labeler on Windows 8.1 Professional. Although I have a work through that is on another video on how you can uh, use the template labeler, even if you're in this situation, for some people it still doesn't work. So if you're in this situation where you cannot do anything other than use the simple labeler, then maybe this is something you want to consider. So let's have a look and see what we have. So if we launch the um, simple labeler, we know what the interface looks like. We have um, eight, um, well, templates really, you can't really call them anything else. And you choose one of these, you go next, it shows you what you've got. You've got your text fields. If I go back again, and put a different text in here, and um, that's what you get. However, if you look at this, you've got this little image here, this little thumbnail, and that shows you in the program somewhere there is this image that's telling you what you're going to get. And then when you've clicked on it, let's just do that, this then shows up. So where are these? And can we use them? So if I just get rid of that, yes, I want to quit. What I'm going to do is open the program. I'm going to show you, I'm using Windows 7. So if you're using XP, if you're using Vista, it's going to be the same. If you're using uh, Windows 8 or 8.1, you'll have to um, locate your program files. But that aside, I'll show you how to do it with this. So I'm going into my, if I go back one, into where my operating system is. Now you want program files, brackets x86. These are the um, program files associated with the 32-bit um, system. So if you carry on and locate Lightscribe, simple labeler, um, you want content, and images and then in that file you've got a number of other things and you want this file here builders now you've got three files here now in these three files are what we in fact if i go actually back i'll go to the thumbnails that's what we were looking at in the program so you've got the thumbnail images and you've got the full size image which is what we looked at when we chose the image or chose the template and then you've got an XML document that links the two together, really. Excuse me. Now, eight files for each. Oh, well, no, eight files for each. Each one has three files. There's eight of them. So what we need to do is create um, a file for each of these. And that way, it will import it into the back of the program. And then we can use it when we launch the program. So the easiest way to do this is to make a note of the file names. Now, with these full size images, these are 1000 by 1000 pixels. So the image you want to create um, as your final image to burn is that of that size. The thumbnail, um, well, <laughs> is as it is, a lot smaller. What I suggest you do is actually, for each of these, copy, say, number eight. It doesn't matter what one it is. In fact, having said that, not number eight, um, use number one, and you'll see why in a minute. And then you can create your own label. This isn't it's not a difficult process, it's just a bit laborious. Now, if I show you 
what I've got when I've created all of these images and the text and the um, XML document as well, you'll see what I've got. Now, if I open one of these up, I really shouldn't have done it that way. Let's just close that. Just, you want to open it in something you can, everyone's got. So um, let's see, open with, um, let's look at what it doesn't really matter what it is. This is the an XML um, document. It's very, in this case, it's very, very simple. And the only thing you need to change is that. Okay, so what we're doing, we're, we're going to rename or give it a new file name and change the name in here. So your um, actual label has, or label template in the system has another name. So in view of that, what I've done is I've created um, all of those files. I'll explain what that one's for in a minute. All of those files um, with the number 10, as we said, if you go back to there, this is 10, the last one's 8, I could have done 9, I could have done any number, as long as it isn't one that's already there. So I've got these files now, which I've created, and to create, the only one, basically, if, if you do this, let me just show you with the XML document, if you because you will find this happens. If you copy it and then paste, you often will get these type of warnings because you're going into the back of a program, remember? So yes, we will. Now, if you try and edit it in here, it won't let you. Because it'll let you edit it, but it won't let you save it. So drag it onto your desktop, continue, yes. So you've got that back out there now. So I'm just gonna drop that down out of the way for a minute and there's my copy so if I open it now with let's use notepad because that's even more basic so all we need to do now is change the name of this okay um, and I'm going to use because I'm going to create a label for my Lightscribe toolbox So I'm going to call it Lightscribe Toolbox 2015 file save. So I've now got my new version of that. Now I will rename it because I can't use eight. And I certainly don't want the word copy in there. So I'm going to call it 10. So there we are. I've got now that one to use. Now if I open my file one up, that's exactly what I've done. But just to show you, that's the one I'm going to use, overwrite it, that's fine. Okay, so let's go about creating the other things we need. So we've got the XML file. Now, we need a um, image file. So I'm going to, and these have got to be PNG files. So I'm going to reduce the size of this because to keep the program in something you can see, I'm using, um, I'm going to have to reduce the size so you can see it. So that's my 1000 by 1000 label, okay? And I've, I mean, the original images were colored um, and I've just um, turned them into grayscale because frankly, that's what they're gonna be like when the um, original, uh, sorry, the final label is created. So that's my um, label that I will actually be burning. Now, I will point this out now, I've created text within the label so everything i've got here is as it is now you may remember if i go if i just open the simple labeler again and we've got two text fields now if you leave them blank in other words with just that word those words there and then you um so if you just open one of these you will have into your top text here into your bottom text here now if you are using if you're using a label design that will accommodate these rows of text like that then use them don't put them in your label but I'm not I could they're in the wrong place and you can't move them so going back to this I want my text up here and I want two um, fields so I 
I can't use the fields that are in the, the program, so I've put the text in, in the image. So this is just an image saved as a PNG file and saved with the um, its full size, that's what FS really means, and number 10 PNG. So that's my large one of those. So I've got that. The next thing you need, let's get rid of this again, yeah, let's get rid of it, is, if I open this up, this is the, um, let's just click on this so we can show the size. They're actually 86 by 86 pixels. That's the size of that thumbnail. So when you create your image, I mean, actually with this, you don't, you, you copy the number one, which is blank, and then you add, so you can differentiate it between the other from the others in the program. Um, you add an image that represents your label. Now in my case, I just made a very small little toolbox. And so what you do is you copy, edit, copy. Well, I'm using Firefox as I've said before in other videos, but you can, whatever your program you use is, that's fine. And copy. Oops, sorry. Paste, edit, paste. Oh, of course I'm copying the wrong thing. Let's do that again. Control C. It'd be easier if I did it like this. Control V to paste. Don't resample. And then uh, that I don't need both of those because obviously. Whoops. So if I put. Whoops. Does this some curves because it's not a whole image. There we are. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little could have done this. Right, so that's my that's gonna be my thumbnail. So I'm gonna save that. I'm just gonna go um, because it's it's the right one I've got, so save. So now if I go into my image file, there you are, you can see it's there. So now we go back into our program. So I've got they're both on there, that's excellent. So metadata. So I need it, I need my metadata. And um, when you do this, it will go, yep, okay, you can do that. So I've got my metadata. I go up and I'm gonna go to my full size. And that's this one. Yep, please, thank you very much. And up and thumbnails, and that's this one. I mean, if you want to keep a copy of them separate, just do copy and then paste into here, it works the same. But in my case, I just want to use them. Right, so we've got them all in the back of the program. So this time, close that and close that. So this time when we open it, we should have available that particular um, label now. So, okay then. So now we should have our new label available, and there it is. So if we click on it, there we have it. We need to remove the text, otherwise we'll, we will have that appearing. So there we are. So let's burn our label, just to prove that it's there. So I'm going to put a blank disk in my Lightscribe drive, burn the label, and um, I'll show you the results when it's finished. Don't worry, we're not going to sit here for 20 minutes. I'll just let it start and then I'll um, pause it and come back when it's finished. Uh, before I do though, I will just run through a few things. As you go through the labeling process, you will get various little flash screens on here with all sorts of links to all sorts of parts of um, HP's lightscribe.com website. And if you don't realize by now, um, the website is closed and is no longer there. It's well, it was closed in December 2013. So um, if you were to click on any of these, um, let's just pick this one. Well, it doesn't matter. It's all going to go to the same place. I'll just do that and then show you what happens. That's what happens. So don't bother clicking on any of the links is really what I'm saying. Information. Let's get rid of that. All of this information is um, available in one form or another from um, any of my websites, lightscribe software.org, lightscribelabeling.com, or um, on the this site, the lightscribe.tv. And if 
there's a question you have at any time that I don't cover um, on any of the sites, send me a email and I'll do my best to answer the question. And like I say on other videos, if enough people ask me the same thing, I'll produce a video to answer it because it'll be easier probably. So anyway, I'm going to um, pause this now and um, come back to you in 20 minutes. See you then. Hi, welcome back. Yeah, as we can see, we've completed the burning process and um, let's have a look see what we've got. There we are. I don't know how well you can see that. I'll try and hold it up. So it's reasonably okay. Works a bit peculiar. There we are. Okay. So that's what we've got. Um, so you can create any light scribe label you like using the simple labeler as long as you don't mind going to the trouble of uh, creating all these bits of files and uh, not just your image you need. Um, but at least it can be done. And um, really that's the um, essence of why I wanted to show you this, that um, we have this um, option and um, it's something for us to use. So uh, thanks very much and uh, see you on the next video. Bye for now.